welcome to my YouTube channel. So tonight we're trying to find what we call the Deals Cauldron. I've only ever been to the Deals Cauldron once before and that was following the tourist route. But tonight I'm going to follow the back walk through the forest and I'm going to follow the river from the top of the waterfall and then work my way down to the base of the waterfall. So join me and let's see how we got on tonight. Okay, so this is the river lead knock and there's a weir here so what I'll do is I'll work my way down the river and look for suitable spots where I can get some nice compositions and then ultimately get some nice photographs. There's some nice shades so it's been pouring rain the last week and today's been really miserable but this, the sky is breaking up here and the clouds coming through so we're getting some nice pockets of light in specific places so what I might do is I might look for areas that have got nice light shining on them like branches at the side of the water and pockets of spotlights on the water and then I'll take those as potential images um, Right, well, it's always good to be at a place that you've never been before because you're never really sure what to expect so let me crack on and I'll start looking for compositions and then we'll get photographs set up what I have here is a weir um, I'm just going to make sure I've got my camera set up and I've got the polarizer in the right place what I was going to do was use there's a rock right in front of me so what I was going to try and do was use that rock as the leading line and then have that coming in have this rock here coming in at the bottom left hand side of my photograph pointing that way and then from a composition point of view it bounces off that rock <coughs> and the weir comes flowing into it so this, the bed of this river is really really slippy I've got new wellies so I'm trying them out because my last ones were leaking and my feet were soaking so what I'll do is I'm just going to focus in on the weir I'm just going to check my settings so I'm going to drop my ISO to 50 I'm going to up my aperture to f8 and I'm going to see if I can reduce if I can get a two second shutter speed I'll just test that no that's definitely not going to work right so a quarter of a second looks like a quarter of a second seems to be the nice light I'm just going to check this to make sure I've got the water the way I like it oh wow right so what I'll do is a focus stack and as usual I'll spare you um, me having to go through each of the process for focus stacks but effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a photograph of that rock a photograph of that rock and then I'm going to focus in on the weir I'll bring those three images together and we should have hopefully a sharp image from front to back and then what I'll try and do after that is I might pull back a bit and see if I've got a different composition with this big rock and those two rocks with the weir and then what I'll do is I'll test the slippiness of the water and I might try and walk further into the middle of the river and see if I can get a front on shot of the weir the only challenge with that might be is that rock slap bang right in the front of it so let me get cracked on and I'll get this first rock and focus So for this shot, <coughs> I'm going to zoom in to the weir, but I'm going to have the rock on the right hand side and the weir coming out on the left. I've actually got a tip of that rock in the image, but I'll crop that out and make it a 16 by 9. So it's closer to a kind of letterbox shape. What I'll do is I'll focus in on the weir. I've actually upped my f-stop and aperture to f10. And the reason I've done that is I'm trying to compensate for the bright light that's hitting the trees. And what I can do is 
just a quick bracket exposure and then that will give me the various exposure uh, underexposure, normal exposure and overexposure images that I can use only because the brightness of the trees so let me see if I can zoom in further So, I will now make my way back and we'll walk further down the river and we'll see what other compositions are there. Alright, so I haven't walked very far at all. Um, <clears throat> so as I was trying to walk back to the edge of the river, I spotted a curve where you bend. So I thought, well, I'll set the camera up because you just never know. I've got I've had to up my settings because it's darker here. So I've upped my ISO to 100, I'm at F10, and I'm now at a third of a second. So I'm just going to zoom in on the centre of the image, and I'll take my shot. I could have swore I saw a fish jump earlier. And I'm just going to double check that image, just to make sure that I've got the flow of the water I have, that I like, right. So <clears throat> now what I'm just going to do is just up the shutter speed just a bit to a fifth of a second just to brighten up the scene and just check right so that's a nice image so what I can do now is I'm just going to turn the camera around to see if I zoom in what kind of image or composition can I get so there's a composition there that what I might do is zoom out and then I can always crop later. So I've zoomed out. I'm just going to adjust the polarizer to make sure that it's darkening the water. Whoops. A wee slip oh, on another one. So I'll refocus into the center of the image. I'll take my shot. So that's nice. Yep, I'm just checking for highlight clippings and there aren't any. So, I will now move over and we will we'll now start to walk down the edge of the river and see what we can find. Alright, so I've come under a tree because there's quite a, as I was walking down, it's actually quite tricky to get to the side of the river actually. But as I was walking down, there's a really cracking view of <coughs> the weir. But it's framed by all the branches of the trees underneath this tree. So we've got all these dark rocks in the foreground. And then we've got the bright weir that looks all up. But I don't think it is because it's not. The sun's away so... Let's take advantage of this while we can. I'm going to focus in on the weir for this shot. I'll just check the polarizer. So I've got a quarter of a second, a hundred, ISO 100 F10. So there's a little bit of clippings in the base of the water. So what I might do is a, a multiple exposure shot. And then what I'll do is I can blend those images together and I can lighten up these rocks in the foreground. Um, I'm going to turn the camera around because there's a nice shot here and what I'm looking for is, uh, see that tree's in the way, but what's over there is a little tree on its own, sitting on a rock, that could prove to be a really nice image. So I'm going to focus in on this tree, and then I'll check. The composition is quite tight, so I've got the tree on the left-hand side and then I've got 
the water flowing down from the right, although there's not a lot of room, so what I might do is give it a little bit more room. I'm just checking to see. See, that would make a nice square composition, so I'll just zoom out a fraction just to give the tree space. It's not a bonsai tree, but it actually looks like a wee mini bonsai tree. So uh, because I've changed my focal distance, I'm just zooming in again to check the focus on the tree. I'll take the shot, and then what I'll do is a, a quick exposure compensation, because it's quite dark. Um, and then what I can do is I can select the areas that I want to brighten up after I've taken the shot. Now what I might do now is just move to the left hand side and see if there's any shots of the river flowing down the way. So I'll just put that back. I'm just going to walk over here. I mean even the trees round about here are really nice and the moss. I'm just checking the depth of the water as I go. So there is an image here. There isn't an image here because that tree is growing right in front of me. So if I flip my camera over, there's not an image there either. So if I go back here, there's a cluster of rocks just in front of me. So what I'll do is I'm just going to give it space and I'll zoom out a bit. And then what I'll do is I'll focus in on those rocks. Because what I can do later is I can crop that area. So I'm just going to lift the ISO to 200 just so I can see. Right, I'm just going to turn around. I'm just being really conscious because these rocks are really, really slippy. Right, so right away, I've got quite a nice shot here. I'm just going to tighten everything up, zoom out a bit, come down a wee bit. Of. Right, so I've got two through the boulders here. And I've zoomed out enough that I've captured that boulder over there on the right hand side. I'm just going to check. I've left it at ISO 200. I'm going to focus in on the centre of the image. So the middle rock here. I'll take my shot. It's just a tight, tiny wee bit overexposed. So what I'll do is I'll drop the ISO to 160. And there we go. I've got no highlights. That's actually a really nice picture. All right, so I'm just standing in the middle of the river. Um, I'm going to move that far. However, what I have got is the photographs that I was taking earlier of the water coming down. I'm now right in front of it and I've got a really nice view of the small set of falls in front of me. I've got those, num those two, three wee falls in the middle and then I've got the weir at the back. So what I'll do is I'm just levelling off my camera, just double checking the polarizer here because I really need to take the brightness off the water. There's a lot of reflections with the grey sky. I've zoomed into the center, so I've got a third of a second. I've got a F10 aperture and ISO 100. Because even although it's got quite cloudy, it is quite bright. And to be honest, it's quite muggy as well, so it's, it is quite warm for a change. So, which I'm not complaining about because I've had to refocus 
because I've zoomed out and I've changed the focal length. Oh, that's really nice. Actually, if I just pull that down a little bit further. Now what I'll do is I'll take the same image, but I'll focus in on the rock immediately in front of me. And take that shot. And then what I'll do is I'll take a shot I'll focus in on those rocks just above here I'll take that shot right All right, so the, the branch of the tree that I'm going to take a, focus of, a photo of is the second branch furthest away. There's too much rubbish under this first branch that's been collected under the river. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing in on this branch, the furthest away branch, using that as a leading line to point down the river. But what I'm also doing is I'm using the branch to come in on the bottom right-hand side of my photograph. So I'm focused in... I've focused on the branch and I've focused in using a quarter of a second F10 and ISO 100. Now, I'll just do a quick exposure compensation shot. Right, so I'm also trying to figure out how to get down to the bottom of the river because there's a lot of bracken um, and trees at the right hand side. Um, what I'll do is I'll wade down the edge of the river and I'll just keep checking the depth as we go along and then I'll turn the camera back on when we're ready. Okay, so I've moved to the right and I've had to move to the further right. I need to just watch this water beside me because that plant was in my way and well in nature you're not really want to destroy a plant life so what what I will do actually there's a nice shot here right so I found a composition so the composition that I found is going to be the water flowing on the right hand side and going down that gorge so the only thing I don't know is how close am I to the top of the Dales Cauldron waterfall? So you've probably noticed I've waded over the other side of the river because it was just too tricky to try and follow the river down because there's too many deep pools on the right hand side. So what I'll do is I'll take a couple of shots here. I might change my lens and I'll zoom in to that little gorge area because there's two fallen trees and a big rock in there and then what we'll do is I'll, what I'll try and do is film what I'm looking at so that you can see what I'm taking a photo of as well as you see in the final images so I'll, what I'll do is I'll take a couple of shots here and I'm, I'll do a quick exposure compensation so I'm taking a shot of the foreground so I've got this rock with all the water coming down on the right hand side now what, I, now what I will do is I'm going to, there's an old car wheel over there. So I'll focus in on that area. I'll take that shot. And then what I'll do is I'll focus in on the gorge area and I'll take that shot. Okay, so I've got the zoom lens on, so I'm just going to focus in closer down the gorge. I'm going to zoom in on the big rock. In the centre of the image. 
I'll just do a quick exposure compensation. Right, so now I'm going to zoom out a bit because there's quite a bit of atmosphere in there and the light's quite nice. So if I just lift the camera up a bit, just check my focus. Take the shot. Just do a I'm just going to up my shutter speed a bit, uh, slow it down, and then I'll do a quick exposure compensation. So the other shot I've seen is, if I can zoom in further, there's a shot of the water coming down and then if I get the rock, the fallen trees in focus, I can use that. So, right, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the fallen trees in focus. I've just got the tops of the water that's rippling down or tumbling down the river. I've got the big rock just on the offset on the left hand side so there's enough water for the water to flow down and hopefully that could be quite a nice image. Right, so the light's away from the woods but there's also a nice shot back up the river so what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around and let me see because this could be quite a low shot right so that might this might work oh that's much nicer right wow Oh, that's... Right, so if I lock the camera there, I'm just going to level this off a bit. <clears throat> oh, that's really nice. So, right, so I focused in on the image. I'm going to do a quick focus stack. You'll see the final image, because what I want to try and do is get this really sharp from front to back. And my zoom is really sensitive tonight. So hopefully, I know my eyes aren't very great, but hopefully this I can do this shot justice. Alright. So let's get back to where we were. And uh, let's keep wandering and see what other images we can get